Well, last night, <laughs> last night I stepped into Bizarro World. Uh, got home just in time to watch Donald Trump on TV, and uh, you know the uh, MSN. We got to come up with what uh, MSN DT Donald Trump. Oh, DT! Wow. Do we get a withdrawal from him? I, I guess MSNBC does. Anyhow, they did a, an hour-long infomercial uh, for Donald Trump's presidency, and you know, with J- Joe Joe Scarborough interviewing Donald Trump and Mika Brzezinski occasionally trying to get a word in edgewise. And it seemed to me like, you know, Scarborough was like trying to trying to to nurture Trump or uh, mentor Trump. On how to become a, a a quote real Republican, in other words, a corporate sellout, and and Trump was having none of it, you know, and it, it was just it was just fascinating, um, and 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 on the other hand, as I tweeted out last night, I at one point I tweeted, my head hurts, you know, Trump is making sense, um, he uh, well here's here's a couple of things here's clip number clip number one guys here's uh, Donald Trump from last night. Uh, it, it's self-explanatory. Just listen to this. I wanted to describe a candidate to you. The candidate is considered a political outsider by all the pundits. He's tapping into the anger of the voters, delivers a populist message. He believes everyone in the country should have health care. He advocates for hedge fund managers to pay higher taxes. He's drawing thousands of people at his rallies and bringing in a lot of new voters um, to the political process. And he's not beholden to any super PAC. Who am I describing? Or any special interests or any donors. You're describing Donald Trump. Actually, I was describing Bernie Sanders. Well, that's good. <laughs> well, see, this is this is the whole thing about populism. Anyhow, this is uh, clip number two. Uh, Trump, uh, again, he goes off on trade. The, this is, this is I, I, you know, this phenomenon. I, I, this is why, see, th- this is why rep- independence and... Republicans who never read Russell Kirk, you know, who who have no idea who, you know, probably don't even remember William F. Buckley are going for Trump is because they're actually they actually want an American first uh, an America first agenda, particularly with regard to trade and these trade deals that we've been having, um, you know, since Richard Nixon came up with this idea back in the 70s on behalf of Pepsi to cut a deal with China. These 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 bizarre trade deals that are really corporate managed trade. They're, they and, and and many of the trade deals. I mean, like the TPP only has what five or seven out of the out of the almost thirty parts of it sections of it that have to do actually with trade. The rest of it is like tightening up copyright laws and increasing penalties and making it easier for corporations to sue countries and all this kind of stuff. So uh, clip number two here is uh, Donald Trump on trade. I tell you, there's one thing that we're very similar on. He knows that our country is being ripped off big league, big league on trade. The problem is he can't do anything about it. He's not going to be able to do whereas Why I'm not? going to do things. Because he doesn't understand it. I mean, he doesn't understand what's happening. But he does know no, that I, China I mean, no. and these other countries are ripping us off. Mexico, you see Carrier moving down. They're moving down to Mexico. Nabisco is moving. The whole thing is crazy what's going on with Mexico. He does understand that much more so than many people. Yeah, the he that Trump was talking about, of course, was Bernie. Uh, clip number three is uh, who would Trump rather run against? This this was fascinating, too. Here it is. Would you rather run against Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton? Well, it's a great question. I think I'd rather run against Hillary just because I'd love to beat Hillary. I think I can beat Hillary so easily. But, but honestly, Bernie Sanders can't do it. The okay. bottom line is I think he would be easier to beat than Hillary. Okay. Because I always wanted to run against a socialist in this country. I socialist against a populist fascist it would be fascinating he said uh, apples he would force apple to crack iphones so this is clip number four. First, First of, of all, all do you think, do you think apple, apple is, is in the wrong yes and secondly if you are president donald trump what do you do as far as changing laws to make technology or to uh, deal te- with this situation? tech companies comply with the needs of the government i think it's disgraceful that apple is not helping on that i think uh, security first and i feel always felt security first uh, apple should absolutely we should force them to do it we should do whatever we have to do and i guess he wants to be a good liberal and he doesn't want to give the information Right. I don't think this has anything to do with Tim Cook being a good liberal. <laughs> in fact, I'm not even sure he is. I, I, you know, in the modern definition, it's hard to imagine any, you know, t- 
top 100. Well, who knows? I, I don't know. Anyhow, it's uh, but uh, that that is Donald Trump. Anyhow, Donald Trump last night was uh, was going off on how um, on how President Bush did you know failed to keep us safe. Joe kept trying to no no don't say yeah, but uh, you know. I would like somebody needs to tell Trump that Dick Cheney was given two jobs in the first week of the Bush administration, and one of them was the counterterrorism task force that was supposed to track Bin Laden. They did not meet until September of 2001. You're listening to the Tom Hartman program. Call 202-536-2370. I mean, I realize, you know, Dick Cheney is not Jeb Bush's brother, but Dick Cheney dropped the ball leading to 9-11, even more than George W. Bush did. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.